guys, I hope your week is going well. I have a sunscreen empties video for you guys. I love doing these. Um, these are all the sunscreens that I used up over the summer, so over the past three months. And I have a few here from Canada, some from Japan, or one from Japan, and a few from, or just one from Europe, and the rest are uh, American sunscreens. Um, I had some great ones and some not so great ones. And I apologize, it is raining and thundering outside. It's that time of the year, so if you can hear that, my apologies. Um, all right, first up, a sunscreen that I love. A viewer from Europe sent this to me a while back, and I finished it up this past summer, using it mostly on my face, is the Uriage Berry Sun um, Fragrance-Free Cream um, Light Texture Invisible Finish. It's SPF 50 plus. This is a wonderful chemical sunscreen. Um, so it doesn't have any cast whatsoever. It is oil free. It's great for people with oily skin or greasy skin. Um, and I don't believe it's what it is water resistant. It is water resistant. Um, so there are those features of it. Uh, this does have alcohol denaturant in it. So if you're somebody with rosacea or really sensitive skin, this is probably not going to be your best choice. Uh, it may flare your flare your symptoms. Chemical sunscreens in general can do that for people with rosacea and also the presence of alcohol denaturant can cause problems. But in terms of the, the UV, the UV uh, filters in this, it is, it's got some great ones. It has uh, diethyl amino hydroxy benzoyl benzoate, which is Uvenol A+. Uvenol A+, is a chemical filter that covers UVA1 and UVA2 and has a peak absorption of 354 nanometers. The, this is important for protecting you against the aspects of UV light that penetrate deeply into the skin and damage, damage collagen and contribute to wrinkle formation and suppression of the immune system and ultimately skin cancer. Um, so it's got that and it also has um, bimetrizinol in it. Bimetrizinol covers UVA1 and UVA2 as well. Its peak absorption is 345 nanometers. So you've got, you've got two filters in this that, that really hit some good, good areas of the UVA spectrum to give you great UVA protection. Um, bimetrizinol will also cover you for UVB. UVB are those rays that burn your skin and directly damage the DNA in your skin cells. Um, and then you also have octinoxate and uh, octisalate and octyltriazine, all of which will also cover UVB. So very nice broad spectrum, uh, really nice aesthetics to this. And it's great for, like I said, people with oily skin, not greasy. Uh, in terms of, of the finish that it leaves, it is a little bit on the shiny side in comparison to the uh, La Roche-Posay Shaka fluid that I reviewed for you guys a while back and finished up last season um, and really loved. This is a little a little shinier than that. That's a little more on the matte side, but so this is this is more of a moisturizing vehicle. So it'll be a good one for those of you with oily skin headed into winter. I think you'll find that you get along pretty well with this if you're looking for one that is a little more moisturizing, but great broad spectrum coverage, really loved it. And no cast, uh, no cast for that one whatsoever. Um, the next one that I finished up uh, is the last of my Hotelabo Perfect UV Gel SPF 50 Plus PA 4 Plus. This is a Japanese fragrance-free uh, chemical sunscreen that uh, this is actually has actually been discontinued, but they I believe they relaunched it. Uh, this is a 2018 formulation. And so I used it up this year, um, so I'm good in terms of the expiration date. But anyways, this one is uh, has Tinosorb S in it, which will give you UVB and UVA uh, coverage. And it also has Uvenol A+, just like the Berry Sun. So you're getting, again, with this, great filters in here for really hitting a nice, a nice degree of that UVA spectrum. Uh, plus this has titanium dioxide in it, which will give you protection against UVB as well as some UVA. Because this has titanium dioxide in it, there is a little hint of a, 
of a white pearlescence to it. It's not a frank cast though. There's no alcohol denaturant in this and it's very moisturizing and not drying. Um, and so in addition to the UVA filters, you've also got Parcel SLX and Octinoxate, which will give you your UVB. This was great. Um, and I, I love this. My mom really likes this. She actually puts it on uh, her arms and chest and face before she goes out to walk Thai B. And so for this, this past summer, she used it as well. And, um, you know, the, the great thing about it is it's not sticky. So in the heat and the humidity, this is comfortable to put on and reapply. It doesn't give you that weighed down sunscreen feeling. Oh my goodness, we're getting a downpour out there. I hope it doesn't flood. Those of you in, in the Houston area, fingers crossed you all. I hope you didn't experience any flooding and with all this September rain we're getting. Okay, then I had a great time this summer making my way through um, some Canadian sunscreens that a viewer from Canada sent me. The Garnier Umbrella sunscreens, SPF 60 and SPF 45. Um, both of these are um, great in that they contain uh, L'Oreal's Mexoril. Mexoril is a uh, filter that will really get uh, UVA, the UVA spectrum quite well. Specifically, the combination of Mexoril SX and Mexoril XL. Um, anyways, yeah, Mexoril SX and Mexoril XL hit the UVA spectrum really well, and both of these have that in it. There's no cast with these. And in addition to Mexoril for UVA, these also have avabenzone, which is the filter that we rely on here in the States. We, we don't get these other filters here in the States. Uh, we do, our sunscreens don't use Mexoril, they don't use Tinosorb, they don't use Uvenol A+. We're stuck with Ava Benzone. That's not, that's a UVA filter that works, but is not very stable. So we can't, you know, it degrades on, in our sunscreens. And so it's just not, it's just not giving you reliable protection against those wavelengths that penetrate deeply and damage collagen as those that you can purchase overseas in Japan and Canada and throughout Europe. Anyways, uh, so this, but this has avabenzone in it. And my point in saying that is that Mexoril will actually stabilize avabenzone. So this mix, mix of Mexoril SX and Mexoril XL along with avabenzone really makes for a nice family of filters to really get you good coverage in the UVA range. And then it also has, of course, importantly, UVB filters. Um, it's got uh, titanium dioxide and octoprolin, so you know you have those in there. There is a little bit of a pearlescent white cast to these, um, but if you're a darker skin type, I think that they actually do blend in pretty well. Um, but comment below, those of you, those of you in Canada who have used these, uh, do you notice a cast of them? I really didn't. Maybe a little bit with the 60, but not the 45. Um, they're both very comfortable. They're both oily skin friendly. I don't believe they contain alcohol denaturant in them, but I might be I might be mistaken on that because they don't list the inactive ingredients on here and they only list the active ingredients on the back of the bottle. Um, but yeah, I love these. I, I had no issue with these around my eyes. Uh, they're not greasy, really comfortable. They also work really well on the body as well. I use them on my neck, my chest a lot, and my arms. Um, and they, they work really well there. The third sunscreen from, from Canada that I made my way through that I liked, but is not, you know, particularly noteworthy is the Garnier Ombrelle SPF 60 Ultralight Advanced. The reason I say this is not particularly noteworthy is that it has the same filters that you'll find in the chemical sunscreens here in the States, meaning it does not have Mexoril in it. It just has avabenzone in it and then a few, then a handful of chemical filters to protect against UVB. But the aesthetics of this are very nice. It's similar to a lot of the La Roche-Posay sunscreens. I mean, Garnier, L'Oreal, La Roche-Posay, they're, they're the same. Uh, so it's similar to a lot of the liquidy, more liquidy um, Roche-Posay fluids that you can get here, the fluid sunscreens, very similar to that. So I enjoyed using it, but uh, what I'm t why I'm telling you this is if you're here in the States, don't go out of your way to go to Canada and buy this one. This one you can is not unique. It doesn't offer anything over what you can get here. But if you happen to be in Canada, I would instead suggest picking up the Umbrella 60 or 45 as these have Mexoril SX and Mexoril XL in them to get you that good coverage. Now the thunder and lightning has died down. All right, and then I really come to love these dermatology sunscreens. They're just great moisturizers with a nice 
SPF. They're combination sunscreens and I uh, first used up the uh, Protect and Glow SPF 45 Light Tint Anti-Aging. I think they may have discontinued this one um, and in its place they now, now have replaced it with a better one in my opinion, the Universal Tint. I'm not sure if they discontinued the, um, the uh, Light Tint but uh, anyways, the universal tint is newer and better, and I'll tell you why. The light tint is tinted, it has a very nice, both of these have a very nice tint to them. Uh, not, it doesn't look like you're frankly wearing makeup, but really, uh, you know, goes on nicely and smooths smoothly onto the skin. It doesn't leave any kind of white cast whatsoever. Um, but both of these are combination sunscreens. The reason the newer universal tint is better than the um, anti-aging light tint is that the newer universal tint replaces titanium dioxide with zinc oxide. And zinc oxide is a little bit better than titanium dioxide for giving you coverage into UVA. So I like that replacement. But as far as the tints on these, I, I found that they both were, were really nice, but it's not something that is gonna give you coverage like makeup would or foundation would. You'll still be able to see, uh, you know, blemishes and whatnot through, through this. Uh, it's, it's more of a sheer, a sheer tint. Um, so, uh, you know, don't expect frank coverage. But the nice thing about using the tinted formulations is that they have iron oxides in them. Iron oxides will not only protect you, not only tint the sunscreen, give you that nice, uh, you know, mask of the white, but will also offer some protection against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light in the blue light spectrum. I have a video talking about that more in detail, but these offer that and they're great. They're oil-free, they're great for acne prone skin. The Universal Tint one, however, does have niacinamide in it, uh, whereas the anti-aging one, I believe, did not. Uh, and I know some of you are sensitive to niacinamide and specifically you've mentioned that when you've used the dermatology sunscreens, they don't work for you because of the niacinamide. So those are the tinted ones. I went through two, the universal and the light tint. And I also finished up uh, their untinted one, which I'm also currently wearing now <laughs> in this video. Uh, the, the regular anti-aging one, this is a zinc oxide and um, a combination sunscreen. It's got zinc oxide and some chemical filters for UVB. I love this, but it does have a niacinamide in it. This leaves, in my opinion, a little bit of a cast. Um, it's almost like uh, a shiny, it almost looks like you have a little bit of some kind of highlight on. But many women of color have commented that they have since started using this and find that it, it works well for them and they do not notice any cast. But on my skin, I notice a little bit of a cast. I don't know. Um, I find it just gives almost like a little bit of a highlight, which I think looks nice, uh, but I'm hesitant to tell you it's cast free. But yeah, really enjoyed that and definitely recommend it. You'll notice I didn't go back to any Ulta, Ulta MD sunscreens this summer. I pretty much stuck with that as my daily moisturizer or sunscreen, moisturizing sunscreen. And I plan to continue using that through winter as kind of my base layer you know, moisturizer, sunscreen. I reapply the dermatology ones a few times a day, but I've mostly been reapplying the Garnier Ombrelle ones uh, throughout the day as well. All right, then a sunscreen that I finished up and don't recommend to you guys. This was sent to me for consideration for, uh, uh, for sharing with you guys. It was just a PR gift. The Think Sport SPF 30 Everyday Natural Tint. And I'm really sad to not be able to recommend this because it's a zinc oxide sunscreen, non-nano size zinc, meaning it will give you really good coverage against UVB and UVA1 and UVA2. Uh, non-nano zinc is, is a, a good size for protecting against those wavelengths. And non-nano zinc will also protect a little bit against blue light. And because this is tinted, it's got iron oxides in it. So I was really excited, but they put fragrance in this. They put citrus oil and it's pretty noticeable. I wound up using this on my body. I tried using it on my face and as much as I loved the way it looked, it felt actually uncomfortable and I did experience some irritation around my eyes. And you guys know, I can hack pretty much anything in terms of sunscreen on my skin, on my face and don't ever experience any issues. But this was almost itchy and uncomfortable and I attributed it to to the citrus oil in this. Um, and so I don't recommend it, which is a shame. It otherwise was nice. I believe it also has, it also has olive oil in it too. Olive oil and leave-on products, leave-on moisturizers or sunscreens can increase trans epidermal water loss. So maybe that's why. 
it's a little more on the drying side but I wound up wearing this a lot uh, in the gym uh, because uh, uh, it's water resistant so I put it on like my arms and legs before going into the gym and it looks really nice unfortunately it's got the fragrance speaking of things that look nice but unfortunately have fragrance I have two others here um, the Glossier Invisible Shield this is not worth your your cash guys and I feel bad because it looks really nice and people probably like this that use it it has fragrance in it and honestly it's pretty lame in terms of the ingredients for for UV protection it has avabenzone and then a homosalate and octisalate for UVB it's SPF 35 it's not water resistant it just looks nice it um, you know I reviewed it for you guys in the Glossier video so if you want to see see it on check out that video but I burned through this really quickly there's not a lot that comes in this pump and again it has fragrance so I don't recommend I don't recommend that but anyways I finished it up another one that has fragrance in it I got this little sample of and I did finish it up is the Isden um, ultralight emulsion broad spectrum SPF 50 it's a shame because this looks amazing and I didn't even notice it had fragrance in it um, I just got the sample and there are no ingredients listed other than zinc oxide um, and then I went on the website and found it does in fact unfortunately have fragrance in it boo because it looks beautiful but it's also really expensive so not one I'm going to recommend you guys go out and plunk down cash for it's not worth your money expensive has fragrance in it but gosh it does look nice um anyways then one that I finished up on my travels, more or less, I had the sample of the Obagi Sun Shield Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This is a combination sunscreen. It has zinc in it for UVB and UVA, as well as octinoxate for UVB. It is very matte, as the name implies, and I found it a little drying, and I would not uh, purchase this on, for you know regular use. But some of you, I think, actually use it and like it a lot. It is very matte. I found it drying and just not, just didn't work for me. Um, it's pretty expensive, so um, I would not, I would not purchase that, uh, repurchase that. All right, and then um, another one with fragrance. This was sent to me actually by a viewer, and I'm really grateful that you sent this to me because a lot of people are asking me about it. It's a Copper Tone Sport Clear SPF 50. This. <laughs> I used uh, up over the past uh, probably six weeks or so uh, in the gym as my body sunscreen and just in going out and about. Um, it's actually kind of nice going on. It's, it's got a cooling sensation to it, but it does have added fragrance and it pills up a fair amount. Um, it pills up particularly around your um, elbows. Um, it's called the anti-cubital fossa. I found that it it pills up a lot, so I don't I don't recommend this. But I actually like like the fragrance in this. It reminds me of being at the beach as a child. Um, but uh, yeah, I like the smell of this, but it didn't really hold up particularly well. You know, it's water resistant 80 minutes, but I found that with sweating, it it pilled up a lot, and it's kind of this interesting um, vehicle that almost feels like. The, I, I explained this in another video and it feels like the if you ever cut, get a, di, a, a baby diaper and you cut it open and, and get that filling wet it um, kind of is like this gelatinous stuff that's exactly what this feels like <laughs> that diaper stuff um, anyways uh, yeah the other one that I finished up though and strongly recommend considering although it too does pill a little bit actually is the banana boat simply protect sport SPF 50 this is a combination sunscreen. It has zinc, ox, zinc, and it also has octinoxate, homosalate, and octoprolin. Fragrance-free, um, great for um, sensitive skin. Even though it does have chemical filters in it, you know, be aware of that. If you've got rosacea, that can bother you. But honestly, I I love this, and I found it was a great one. Check out my video though on like affordable drugstore sunscreens. I have more recommendations in that video of just different sunscreens that I haven't made my way through yet but might serve you better if you're looking for an affordable drugstore sunscreen but I recommend this one it was it is very good it doesn't leave a cast on the face uh, you can wear it on the face comfortably it won't break you out it's oil free fragrance free water resistant and uh, it does pill a little bit um, like I noticed it pilled a little bit around the backs of my knees um, but I never really experienced pilling of it or balling of it on my face. Go figure. 
I also finished up the Paula's Choice Smoothing Primer Serum SPF 30. I wore this in Los Angeles. It's pretty good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you guys to necessarily, uh, you know, break your neck to to go out and get it. It is on the expensive side. It was sent to me in PR, so I didn't pay for it. And you know, it's got just some ordinary chemical filters that you can find in any chemical sunscreen here. So the UV protection on this is nothing novel, but it's nice that it's cruelty free. And the vehicle, I think you'll really enjoy. Those of you who are makeup wearers. It really has this nice um, uh, clear uh, color colorless base um, that serves nicely I believe as a makeup primer. It really forms like a nice um, kind of almost a pore blurring effect um, that that I think you would enjoy if you wear if you wear cosmetics. It's touted to have antioxidants in it which is a shame that Paula's Choice is like really promoting antioxidants and sunscreens is something that you should get excited about because as I've said you know sunscreens they're designed to kind of form a film so the antioxidants in them can't really work uh, to, to scavenge free radicals and really, you know, go to work in your skin. And, you know, Polish Choice has always kind of been known for giving you the straight facts about things. And I feel like as though since she sold her company, they're somewhat deviating away from that and trying to lure you into more costly things. But that being said, I do really like this. And, you know, their products are not bad. I, I like 99% of them, but lately they've come out with like a few little tongue in cheek, like, really, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that, Paula? Why? Hey, hey, Paula. Anyways, all right, almost done. I made my way through my favorite Color Science Total Eye 3M, uh, 3M1. You guys, I don't have a dupe for this. I don't. Uh, you know, I, this is not something I ever would have used, um, but it was sent to me over like two years ago to try and I fell in love with it and I can't stop using it and continue to repurchase it. So, um, you know, I love it. It's zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. It's a great under eye concealer, brightener, camouflages um, the uh, like uh, veins under my eyes. I just really, yeah, I can't live without this. Um, but I dropped it on the bathroom floor and the lid cracked. And that has been my biggest issue with it this past, these past few months, is that the lid won't stay on, and so it, it slides around. But otherwise, I love this, and I've got another one to, to head on into for winter. And then finishing up for my lips, I made my way through the um, Havala, or not the Havala, oh, sorry, the uh, Muji uh, Lip Cream SPF, who is this, SPF 20, fragrance-free. This is a combination sunscreen. It's got zinc in it, and I believe... Octinoxy. Uh, I loved this. Uh, it was very moisturizing, did not cause any kind of irritation. My lips are pretty sensitive to, to lip sunscreen products and I, I almost always get like chapped lips with a lot of them. This one did not have, I didn't have that issue. It was very moisturizing. All right, and then lastly, I finished up another Vanny Cream Lip SPF. I love this one, it's my favorite. SPF 30, um, water resistant up to 80 minutes. So I'm really proud of myself that I made it through two lip SPFs. I have the hardest time putting on, remembering to put on lip SPF. I'm pretty good with the body and face. Uh, I'm wearing sun protective clothing and reapplying, and then I, you know, will neglect the lip SPF. You do need a dedicated lip SPF just because the sunscreens that you use on your skin, they don't set up super well on your lips and they can be very drying and irritating. So I always say, go ahead and get yourself a dedicated lip SPF. Check out my lip SPF video if you're looking for recommendations. Um, I've got some good ones in that, but I made it through those two this summer and really proud of myself for, for getting through two. That means I reapplied reapply them somewhat consistently. So yeah, that was all the sunscreen that I used up this past summer. I continue to wear the Dermatology sunscreen. I'm wearing the, um, just the anti-aging one. Also wearing the Color Science Mineral Face Shield and that Super Goop sunscreen that I reviewed for you guys. That's currently what I have that I haven't finished up. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at with sunscreen. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below what sunscreens have you come to love this past summer. I would love to know. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.